Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out what your used iPhone, iPad, and other Apple products are worth at Gazelle dot com. Everybody and welcome to i5 for the iPhone episode 61. This is the fun-filled show where we find all of the best iPhone apps and, and we gather the tips and the news and the tricks and all of the goodies you might ever want. We throw them up down at your feet and we just walk away and be like, peace out. Number one. So for all you new iPhone 5S owners, I am one of you. Do you feel much as you may love your phone, that your apps might be crashing just a little more than usual. If so, All Things D points to app tracker Critter-sism's latest finding that programs do crash about 2% on the iPhone 5S compared to just under 1% on both the iPhone 5C and iPhone 5. Well, you might say, hmm, well, why would it be crashing more on the 5S when the 5C is just as new, Criticism CEO Andrew Levy says that although developers could check their apps for compatibility with iOS 7 during the beta testing period, new hardware wasn't available to anybody ahead of time. The iPhone 5S has a new 64-bit A7 chip and an N7 coprocessor, so there might be a little wonkiness yet to work out. On the other hand, the 5C is basically just an iPhone 5 on the inside. So in a way, devs had that on hand the whole time. Now, of course, since iOS 7 has been released, we've already seen a couple updates. One fixed a pretty big security hole, and we'll continue to see more. But I thought I would be worth passing along why things seem maybe a little crashier than usual for you 5S users. And to everybody else, here's at least one reason not to feel gold envy. Number two. So I don't usually like to highlight apps that aren't officially in the App Store yet, because if you like something, I want you to be able to go there and get it right away. But this launch is only a couple days away, and by the time you watch this, if you're an on-demand person, it might already be live. The app is called Terminology 3, and it's the latest iOS 7 update to a really great dictionary slash thesaurus app, which I think is just better than the native dictionary in iOS all around. You look up a word, you get a definition, but it does other stuff too. You can get more interesting, awesome words to use. You've got a full offline US English dictionary, synonyms, antonyms, deeper word relations. You word nerds, you know who you are. You can star your favorite words for quick access later. Maybe you're like, that is an awesome word and I've got to drop that in a blog post and I just kind of need to remember not to forget it. You've got iCloud Sync for all your favorites and your history and your actions in sync between multiple devices. And there's even Dropbox integration if that's your backup service of choice. Now you might say, I don't know, do I need terminology? I just only need a dictionary once in a while, but hey, why not have something that's really fully functional for three bucks? And yes, it's not free, it is three dollars. Look out for terminology three in the App Store this week. By the way, it'll be sold as a universal iPhone and iPad app, which is great, but you do have to buy it again if you already own an older version. Number three, we're gonna kind of do a two four. We got a couple duh tips from Philip, and I like them both. They cover two native iOS 7 apps, the timer and the weather. Philip writes, it used to bug me that when you set the timer, like when you're cooking, you had to keep your phone unlocked and in the timer app to see it. But in iOS 7, it's nicely improved. The timer now appears in the lock screen, elegantly displayed in a small type underneath the time of day. But what if instead of cooking in, you want to go out, you might want to check the weather. At first glance, the weather app appears pretty limited. For example, there's no indication of you know, the chance of rain or how high the humidity is. And Philip notes that sometimes you want to know what your hair is going to do when you walk outside. But I just discovered this. 
tap the temperature, and voila, the humidity is revealed along with some other useful tidbits. Thank you, Philip. You know, I actually figured out another little weather trick by accident this weekend looking at your trick. If you want to quickly show the weather for all of your saved locations, maybe you like to track a lot of different cities, just pinch in on the app, then just tap any of them to go back to full screen and get your city details again. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Gazelle. You know, the new iPhone is here, and you might want to get rid of some of your old gadgets so that you've got money to buy the iPhone that you really want. That's where Gazelle comes in. Go to G-A-Z-E-L-L-E dot -E com, and you just type in your item. Figure out what Gazelle will pay you for it. You tell Gazelle some details, like the condition of your gadget. And don't worry if it's not in great condition, because they'll even buy back broken iPhones and iPads. And then Gazelle will give you a risk-free offer for your gadgets. And they'll even let you ship it completely free. When it comes time for Gazelle to pay you for what you sent them, you get paid fast by check, via PayPal, or with an Amazon gift card for an extra 5%. Payment is fast within a few days of the item being received. And again, when I say risk-free, it means those offers are locked in. They're good for 30 days. So that gives you time to transfer data, set up your new device. You know once Gazelle says, hey, you're gonna get this much money, you've got that quote for 30 days. It's also trustworthy. Gazelle will wipe your data for free, and they've paid out $100 million to over 600,000 customers. So that is good service. It's also easy. Free shipping. Most items qualify for a free box. The process is fast. There's just no listing hassle at all. You can check out the iPhone 5, the iPhone 4S, iPad 3, you know those new iPads are probably coming out soon. Samsung Galaxy S2 or 3. What's your iPhone worth? Take a minute, go to gazelle.com to find out. And remember, do it sooner than later because iPhones may lose value the longer you wait. That's gazelle.com, G-A-Z-E-L-L-E.com. And thanks to Gazelle for their support of i5 for the iPhone. Number four. So when's the last time that you ran out of juice on your iPhone and you're not at home, and you don't have all your stuff with you, and you didn't pack your messenger bag, you certainly don't have a charger on hand, or a Mophie pack, or any way to get some battery life back into your phone. It's kind of an emergency, and you'd probably pay just about anything just to get a little bit of power. This has happened to me more times than I'd like to admit in the last month. Well, an app called Battery Club might be the app for you then. It's a network of on-demand portable charging for your iPhone. At any Battery Club partner location, say, you know, a cafe or a restaurant, you just ask the server or the bartender for a Battery Club, and then they'll bring a portable charger right to your table. So you don't have to worry about cords or outlets. Sometimes you have one but not the other. It's just a huge pain. It's really no hassle on your part except for the fact that you do give the service your credit card number and they're going to charge you a, a few dollars, about $4 for a session. So let's say I'm in Petaluma. The app gives me a list and map views of all the places that are Battery Club partners. And by the way, I was pleasantly surprised I have quite a few options even in the small town. It uses your exact location to see where the locations that have Battery Clubs are nearest to you. So you always know where you can get a charge. And you have a list of past charges within the app and they'll email you a receipt of each transaction so you can remember exactly where you were and track your experiences that way. I have to say, I don't really love the idea of paying for power. I, there are plenty of nice bartenders that I have encountered over the years who will let you use their iPhone charger for a few minutes behind the bar for free. But as a last resort, I think it's a nice service to have in your back pocket. And finally, number five. If you've upgraded your iPhone to iOS 7, and I'm guessing the majority of you have, it's pretty fun. You may have noticed that the messages and mail apps now only display the first name of a contact in a conversation thread by default. I was like, oh, hmm, okay. Maybe it doesn't bug you. Maybe it doesn't seem that weird to you. But let's say you have two really good friends and they're both named Molly. It's nice to be able to display full names or at least have some options, right, where you might get confused. So here's what you do. You go into settings, you scroll down and tap on mail, contacts and calendars. Then under the contacts section, tap on short name. Then turn short name off. 
By, by short name, Apple means first name. So now you get full names in your messages again. Now, of course, turning short name back on would also give you the option to choose other things like first name, last initial, and stuff like that. So it's all whatever you're most comfortable with. By the way, if somebody set their nickname via Siri to something, for example, over the weekend, I set my name to Badass Bitch. Siri, my nickname is Badass Bitch. From now on, I'll call you Badass Bitch. Okay? And it's showing up in your messages, and for whatever reason you just don't want it to, you could just turn off nicknames as well. If you ever see or hear of a great app or trick on i5 and you want to make sure you don't forget it or pass it along to a friend, just hop over to our show notes at twit.tv slash i5. That's where all of our links live and also where you can subscribe to this fine show with the feed of your choice. We got audio and video feeds. We want to make it as easy as possible for you. Please do email us feedback at i5 at twit.tv. Leave us a voicemail at 614 on i5. Try to keep those voicemails to 30 seconds or less or send us a video with an app review of your own. I'm Sarah Lane, this is i5 for the iPhone, and we'll see you right here next week.